Hi friends, my name is Baji. Welcome back to our channel. In our previous video, we covered the native monitoring tools available with the Windows operating system. Before we dive into native Linux monitoring tools, it is important to cover some Linux basics because in today's tech world, having a solid understanding of Linux is a crucial skill that everyone should be comfortable with. If you haven't watched the Windows OS native monitoring tools video yet, I highly recommend watching it first before continuing with this video. So what is Linux? Same like Windows, it is an operating system that is developed using open source model by Linus Torvalds in early 1990s. Basically, an operating system is a collection of softwares that manages the hardware resources and provides an environment for users to interact with the softwares or application to execute the required tasks. Okay. During the Linux discussions, we may hear the term called distributions. So let's explore the term Linux distribution. Okay. Linux distribution means the collection of softwares and applications packaged together in a way that makes it easy to install and use. Each distribution may have its own unique features, user interface, package management system, and default applications scattering to different needs and preferences. For example, one Linux distribution may come with one particular web browser while the other distribution may come with different web browser by default. This is also referred to as distro or flavor. We can find all the available different distributions at distrowatch.com website. Even though we have different distributions, one thing common among them is Linux kernel. Basically, it is a core of the operating system. It is a layer that sits between the hardware and the applications. It manages the system's hardware and resources such as the CPU, memory, etc. The kernel acts as an intermediary between software applications and the hardware, ensuring that processes are executed efficiently and securely. These days, most IT organizations will use Red Hat Enterprise Linux, also called as RHEL and Ubuntu distributions in their environments. RHEL is popular in financial institutions like banks, telecom industry, healthcare industry, airline industries and many more. Similarly, Ubuntu is popular in startups, social networks and many more. In general, whoever wants to pursue a career in Linux, they will learn Ubuntu distribution first. Even though we have different Linux distributions are available in the market, most of the Linux concepts are pretty much same. However, each distribution is slightly different. If you want to master Linux or learn Linux, it is recommended to focus on the commonly used distributions in IT organizations like RHEL, Ubuntu instead of hundreds of other distributions. One thing we need to understand is that RHEL is not free and we need to pay licensing fees to use it. To avoid these fees, we can use free RHEL derivatives. The two most popular free RHEL derivatives are Alma Linux and Rocky Linux. They are very similar to RHEL with minor changes such as replacing RHEL branding with their own icons and logos etc. Okay. After hearing all these topics, you must be wondering why Linux is so popular when we have Windows, right? So let's look at the, some of the advantages. Linux is open source and usually free to use, which significantly reduces licensing costs compared to proprietary server operating systems like Windows Server. Linux is renowned for its stability and reliability, making it preferred choice for critical server environments. Linux based servers often experience fewer crashes and require less maintenance compared to other operating systems. Linux is inherently more secure than many other operating systems due to its Unix like architecture and robust security features. Its permission system, user privilege management, and regular security updates contribute to its strong security posture. Linux is known for its excellent performance, particularly in server environments. Its efficient use of system resources, low overhead, and scalability make it well suited for handling high volume workloads and demanding applications. Linux scales easily to accommodate growing server infrastructure needs. Whether a company is running a single server or a large cluster of servers, Linux provides the scalability required to support expanding business operations. And there are many other advantages as well. Okay. For our Linux learning purposes, we will install Alma Linux distribution on our laptops. There are different ways to install Linux in the system and many tutorials are available on the internet. We will learn how to install Linux using OVA file. Here OVA means Open Virtual Appliance. It's a pre-configured virtual machine that is packaged in a single file and ready to be imported and used in a virtualization software. In addition to that, we will also see the process of installing Linux in Windows using WSL feature. Now let's install the Linux using the two mentioned methods. To install Linux in Windows, we need to follow certain steps. I have created a document with all those steps and then uploaded the document in our GitHub repo. Okay, so I will share the document link in the video description. Okay, so let's go to our github repo and then go to module 7 and the file name is linux basics part 1 notes.txt okay here i have written all those steps that are required to install linux in windows first i have specified the required software so we need to have these three softwares in order to use linux okay and then i have also given the links to download those required softwares 
and then what are all the prerequisites for installing Alma Linux OVA file. So those steps also written and then finally the steps that are required to install Alma Linux using OVA file. Okay. So first what we will do is we will follow the prerequisites and then after that we will go through the actual installation steps. So the first prerequisite is to download and install the Oracle VirtualBox. So let's go to the download links and then copy the Oracle VirtualBox download link and then open a new tab and paste it here. So from here you need to click on the Windows host which will download the actual executable file. So to save some time I have already downloaded the Oracle VirtualBox executable. So if I go back to download so I can see the Oracle VirtualBox executable file. And next thing we will also download the 7-zip software from this link. So copy this link again and then open it in new tab and then click on the download link next to the 64-bit Windows x64 because these days all our Windows machines are 64-bit so you can click on the download link here in case your machine is 32-bit Windows then you can use the second link okay so once you click this link it will download the exe files again to save some time I have already downloaded this exe file as well okay next we need to download the SSH client so copy the download link open it in a new tab and then paste it here there are two editions available one is the home edition and then another one is the professional edition for our learning purpose we don't need any professional editions and moreover if you want to use professional editions you need to pay some money as well for licensing so that is why we will use the home edition so click the download now link in the home edition and then here we can see two links to download this mobile XTEM SSH client one is the portable edition and another one is the installer edition so the difference between portable and installer edition is that if you are downloading the portable edition you don't need to install it as a software they will give you the application which you can launch it directly and then start using it whereas if you are downloading the installer edition they will give you an exe file which you need to run it so that it will install it as a software onto your local system okay so for our learning purpose we don't need to download installer we'll just go with the portable edition okay so click on the portable edition link which will download the mobile xtem ssh client okay by default they will give you the mobile xtem in a company pressed folder so we need to unzip that before we start using it okay and then we also download the Alma Linux OVA file we are not going to use it as a prerequisite but since we are downloading all the software let's download this file as well okay so let's copy the Alma Linux OVA file link and then open it in a new tab paste it here so here you need to click here Alma Linux 9 genome desktop OVA Okay, so once you click this link, it will redirect you to the Google Drive of Linux Academy. From here, you can just click download. So that will start downloading the OVA file. Since the download process takes some time, I have already downloaded this OVA file before recording this video. Okay, so this is the Alma Linux OVA file. So we have already downloaded all the required softwares and the OVA file. Now what we will do is we will start installing them. Okay. So the first step we need to do is we need to install the Oracle VirtualBox. So go to the download folders or the folder where you have downloaded the VirtualBox and then double click the VirtualBox installer file and then click yes. It will open the Oracle VM VirtualBox installation wizard. So click next and if you want to change the location to some other folder you can click the browse and then give the location but I'll keep it as default location which is the recommended location for this software and then click next it will give you a warning so you can click yes and then also it is telling that there are some missing dependencies so you can also click yes and finally click the install button so that will start installing the oracle vm virtual box onto this laptop okay and if you want to start using the oracle vm virtual box you can click finish or if you don't want to start using it you can uncheck this checkbox and then click finish with that we have completed the Oracle VirtualBox installation. So once you install the Oracle VirtualBox, it will create a shortcut on your desktop, which will look like this. Okay. So if you double click this Oracle VM VirtualBox, it will open the interface. So let's close this. We'll come back to this again. Next, we will download and install the 7-zip. So since we already downloaded, let's double click on the exe file of 7-zip, which will install the 7-zip software onto this machine. Okay. So in the pop-up, click yes and then it is asking you the destination folder you can leave it as default and then click install so that will install the 7-zip software you can click close and then we will install the mobile xtem since this is a portable edition technically there is no installation what we need to do is we just need to unzip the compress folder so right click on the mobile xtem and then select the extract all 
and give the destination folder where you want to extract these files so i'll keep it in downloads itself so let's click extract so once extract is done it will open that folder which is mobile xtem and we can see an application with the name mobile xtem just double click that will launch the mobile xtem ssh client okay and finally we also need to extract the ova file so to extract this file we need 7zip software that is why we have installed the 7zip before we extract this ova file okay so to extract this alma linux right click and then go to show more options and then go to 7zip and then select extract here so that will extract the ova file so we will be seeing a separate folder with the name alma linux 9 okay so inside the folder we will have that ova file so we have completed all the prerequisites now the next step is to install the alma linux using the ova file in these steps also we have completed the download and then extracting the alma linux the next step is to import that alma linux ova file to oracle virtual box software open the oracle vm virtual box software and then go to file and then select import appliance and here you need to select the OVA file. So click on this folder icon and then go to the downloads folder where we have downloaded that OVA file. In case if you download it in a different folder, you need to select that particular folder. Okay. So select the Alma Linux and then select the OVA file. Click open and then click next. Here you can keep it default. No need to make any changes and then simply click finish. It may take few seconds to import that OVA file to this Oracle VM virtual box software and we can see the progress on the right hand side. So let's wait for this import to be done. So once the import is done, then we will be seeing something like this. On the left hand side, we can see Alma desktop and then on the right hand side, we can see the information about this virtual machine. Basically what we did is we have imported a virtual machine, which is pre-configured using that OVA file. Okay. So we have completed the step number three and the next step is to update the network from NAT to bridged adapter. Okay. If you go back to Oracle VM virtual box software in the network tab by default, it is showing as NAT and we need to change it to bridge adapter. The reason for changing it is we want to connect this virtual machine using our SSH client. So let's select the Alma desktop virtual machine and then go to settings, go to network tab and in the attached to drop down, select the bridged adapter and then click OK. So that will change the network to bridged adapter instead of NAT. And the next step is to start the virtual machine. So to start the virtual machine, select the Alma desktop and then click start. So that will start the virtual machine. So we are connecting to a virtual machine using this Oracle VM virtual box software. Okay. Within few seconds, it will ask us to log into that virtual machine. So by default, they have created a user called admin user. So we can use that user to log into this machine. Okay. So click that admin user. So the password is admin user with all lower case. So admin user and then click enter. So we are using admin user to log into this virtual machine. If you want to create a separate user, you can also do that. Okay. So this is a virtual machine with Alma Linux operating system. So if you want to install any software, you can do that. If you want to practice, if you want to master Linux commands or Linux concepts, you can use this virtual machine and then blend the Linux concepts. Okay, so even in our next video, we will use the same virtual machine to learn some basic commands. So with this, we have completed the Alma Linux installation using OVA file. Okay, the next step is we want to connect this virtual machine using a SSH client because in real time, when we are doing the performance testing, our application will be deployed in a different servers, right? So we will connect those virtual machines using a SSH client. So that is why I want to share that process for connecting the virtual machines using SSH client. So that is what we are going to use in real time. Okay. So to connect any virtual machine, we need to know the IP address or the host name of that machine. So to identify the IP address of this virtual machine, what we need to do is click activities and then select the terminal or you can type terminal in the search box. So this is the terminal where most of the Linux users will spend their time to do all the administration activities. Okay. Don't worry. We will also learn some required commands in the upcoming sessions that can help us to understand how to use the Linux operating system. So type IP space A and then press enter. So, so from the output, look for the INET in the ENP 0 S3. So this is the IP address that we need. So let's make a note of this IP address somewhere. So let's open a notepad. 
and then type the IP address 192.168.2.96. So even in real time, if you want to gain access to a virtual machine or server, we need to identify the IP address of that server because we need this information to connect that virtual machines remotely. Okay. So once you note down the IP address of this Alma Linux virtual machine, let's minimize this and then go to the downloads folders where we downloaded SSH client and then open the mobile extent personal SSH client application. Okay. So once you open and then click the session. So here we will have a lot of options like you can SSH to a virtual machine. If it is a Linux machine, if it is a Windows machine, you can also do the RDP. There are other SSH clients like Putty, which is popular and being used by many people. So click the SSH first and then in the remote host section, type the IP address. So let's copy the IP address and paste it here and they specify the username. The username is admin user and then click OK and click accept since we are using for the first time. And then it is asking us to type the password. So let's type the password as admin user. And then if you want to save the password, you can click yes. And after that, it will show us the terminal prompt. So we have successfully connected to that virtual machine. So from here, we can type all the required comments or we can do all the necessary activities. Okay. So this is exactly as if we are logging into this machine and then typing the commands inside the virtual machine. In real time, we will be connecting to any virtual machine using the SSH client. That is why I want to share this process. Okay. So to test this, let's create a file. So let's go to the desktop folder. So don't worry about all these commands. I will share the detailed information in the upcoming video. So let's create a file. To create a file, we need to use touch command test file. The reason why I'm creating this file is just to show you that whatever I'm doing here, we can also see it in the inside virtual machine. So now I have created a file called test file in the desktop of this virtual machine. So go to the virtual machine and then click activities, go to files, go to desktop. We can see the test file. Let's open this file and then type something. This is a test content and then let's save. Just remember that we did that change inside the virtual machine, right? So let's go back to our SSH client and then to view the content of that file, we can type cat and then file name. This is what we have written inside that virtual machine, but we still can see that from the SSH client. Okay. So in real time, when somebody is installing the Linux onto the servers, they will not install the graphical user interface. Everything will be managed to the terminal. So we need to be comfortable using the terminal and some commands. Okay. So this is the process of installing Alma Linux using a OVA file and also connecting that virtual machine using SSH client. And the next thing is we also learn the process of installing Linux using WSL. WSL nothing but a Windows subsystem Linux. So if you go to browser and then type Windows subsystem for Linux and then go to Microsoft Learn link and here they have given a detailed explanation of what is Windows subsystem for Linux. Basically, it is a feature of Windows that allows us to run a Linux environment on the Windows machine without need of a separate virtual machines. So the process that we have followed so far is we have downloaded a virtualization software and then imported a virtual machine into that software so that we can connect with that machine and then learn the Linux concepts. To avoid all these process, Microsoft has provided a feature called WSL, which will help us to create a Linux environment within the Windows machine itself. Okay. So on the right hand side, there's a training link. If you are more interested to learn about this Windows subsystem for Linux, you can go through all this training content. Okay. So you can learn all these contents within 30 minutes. So I would recommend you to go through this training so that you can familiarize yourself with the Windows subsystem for Linux feature. Okay. So to install Windows subsystem Linux in Windows, we need to open the terminal with admin user privileges. So let's type terminal in the search and then select the terminal app, right click and then select run as administrator. Click yes. This will launch the PowerShell app with administrator privileges. So we can do installation and other activities. Okay. So let's go back to our notes. So if you want to check all the available WSL commands, you can type this WSL hyphen hyphen help. So that will give you all the available Windows subsystem for Linux commands. If you want to install, you can use hyphen hyphen install. Suppose if you want to list all the available distributions, you can use the hyphen hyphen list or hyphen L. Okay. 
so the next thing what we will do is we will install the wsl so when you run the wsl hyphen hyphen install what it will do it will install the wsl subsystem for linux and windows at the same time it will also install a default distribution which is ubuntu okay so let's type wsl hyphen hyphen install and then press enter click yes it may take a minute or two to install the windows subsystem for linux and also the ubuntu distribution okay once this is done then we will understand the process of installing all my linux distribution because that is what we are going to use for learning the linux you can install the windows subsystem linux or you can also use the the previous method downloading the virtual box software and then importing a virtual machine and then start using it using ssh client the main idea here is we need to understand the linux basic concepts these are the two different ways to use the linux okay so the installation of windows subsystem for linux is completed now it is installing the ubuntu distribution because that is the default distribution okay so after the installation we need to reboot the system to make these changes effective okay so let's restart the mission first and then continue this video so once we restart the windows machine then in the terminal we will be seeing this message saying that ubuntu is already installed now it is trying to launching the ubuntu so after launching it will ask us to create a user okay so type the username here let's keep it as same like admin user and then it will ask us to input the password for that user so let's type same admin user and then we will get the message saying that the installation is successful then it will give us the command prompt so this is the linux command prompt here you can type all the linux commands based on the requirements okay so to close this terminal either you can close it from here or you can type exit command that will close the ubuntu terminal okay so let's open the terminal app again with the admin privileges and also let me open the github repository so we have completed the installation so if you want to see what are all the different distribution that are installed in this mission using wsl you can type wsl hyphen hyphen list r hyphen l okay so here we can see docker desktop and also ubuntu has been installed if you go to the windows explorer and then we can also see a linux icon under pc and these are the different folders or directories so what are the commands or what are the files that we are creating or using in linux those will be stored in this distribution so we have ubuntu distribution is installed here so inside that we have different directories available which we will talk more in detail in the upcoming video okay and if you want to know what are all the different other distributions available for installation you can use the command wsl hyphen l hyphen o so this will show you all the different available distributions we have ubuntu which is the default distribution for wsl we have also debian kali linux ubuntu different versions oracle linux okay if you want to install any specific distribution we have command here wsl hyphen hyphen install and then distribution name nothing but distro name okay so for example if you want to install debian so type wsl hyphen hyphen install and then hyphen d and then type the distribution name debian so this will install the debian distribution okay so you can install all the available different distribution you can play around with those different distributions okay at the time of recording this video alma linux is not available in the online for wsl so to install the alma linux what we need to do is we need to go to microsoft store and then search for alma linux and select the latest version which is alma linux 9 and then click get so it will download the alma linux and then it will install it on this windows machine okay so it's already downloaded now it is installing it so let's wait for this installation to be done so the installation is completed you can see the message installed so if you want to open this alma linux terminal then click the open here or you can search for alma linux and then select that particular app which will open the alma linux terminal okay so here also it will ask to create a new user so let's type the username and password so this is the alma linux terminal okay so if you go back to our windows explorer and then linux so we can also see a separate folder for alma linux so whatever activities that we are doing using alma linux terminal will be stored inside this directory okay so we have two distributions installed alma linux and ubuntu so if we go back to our powershell terminal now if you type wsl hyphen l we can also see alma linux os hyphen 9 distribution so that means we have two distributions installed in our windows machine using wsl so this is the process of installing the linux 
using WSL. So if you want to uninstall any distribution, the command is WSL hyphen hyphen unregister and then distribution name. So here, let's say we'll unregister the Ubuntu here, which will uninstall the particular distribution. So to remove this particular distribution completely from our Windows machine, we also need to do another step. So in the search, select app and then go to the settings and then select the apps. Click on the installed apps and look for Ubuntu and then click on the three dots, select the uninstall. That will completely remove that particular distribution from this machine. So if you go back to our PowerShell terminal and then type WSL hyphen L, it will not show the Ubuntu because we have unregistered and uninstalled that distribution from this machine. Okay. So if you want to completely uninstall WSL, so you can type WSL hyphen hyphen uninstall. This is the another method of installing Linux in Windows machine. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for staying till then and supporting me. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions or want to share your experiences, feel free to leave a comment below. All the video notes have been uploaded in GitHub and you can find the link in the description. If you are new to our channel, please consider subscribing and also like and share this video so that others will also get benefited. I'll see you with the next Linux basics video. Until then, take care, stay safe and keep learning.